Look, guys, it's an assimilation. There's two of them! Run! Ah! <laughs> For the first time in a long time, my kids actually came out here and interrupted me in the middle of one of my reviews, which never happens. They're actually really good about that. And while I was annoyed at first because I was like seven minutes in to just, you know, my one take fucker like I always do, they came out and I was like, oh man, what the hell? And then I looked at them and went, wait a minute, this movie is about doubling people and their identical twins, assimilation joke incoming. <laughs> so that's why that happened in the beginning there. So let's get back to the review that I had already started, but I'm gonna start again. Almost like I'm assimilating my review. Hmm. So this was recommended me by Teddy Brown. And I know I've said that name on this channel a lot, but he's very passionate about his picks and his picks are lesser known. And most of the time, I'm not as enthusiastic about his selections uh, as I wish I had been. But I always do respect the fact that A, he loves the movies that he watches unabashedly and B, that he's really into something unique to him. Like, I feel like the biggest crime a film can commit to Teddy is to just be more of the same. He would rather, and he really does stick to this. I say this, but I feel like he, he practices what he preaches. He wants a film to swing for the fences and fail than to generically tick all the boxes and be successful. And I'm, I'm with him on that. It's just that it still has to be a good movie. Like, I'm not saying that he has shit taste. We all have shit taste and we all have great taste. I mean, it just depends on who you ask, right? So for me, it's never, it's never about that. It just comes down to personal preference. It's just that when I look at the movie, when I look at the movies that he talks about, anyways, let's talk about assimilation. I'm just trying to get through all of that. This is a movie that while I did not, at the end of it, think it was very good, I did like that they tried something new with the invasion of the body snatchers subgenre, because this is very much a readaptation of the invasion of the body snatchers story. That being said, I feel like the new take on it created more issues than it fixed. And I shouldn't say fixed because there wasn't really any thing that needed to be fixed, but it wanted to be changed and I think that it just created issues and let me explain on that. So in this version of events, there's this small town, of course, and you know, that it's not called Santa Mira this time, I don't know what the hell it's called, uh, I already forgot what it's called. Um, but these two young kids are in town these uh these little creatures are running around and they bite people and when they bite people then they turn into those people and then those copies go and attack the person who they bit their you know the uh, the real person the, the copy attacks the real person to gain their memories to gain their personalities to gain all that right so it's a two-step process as opposed to that one press one step process of the original one so now cool idea because i like that you know there's a version of you chasing you to get your memories to get who you are okay but here's the problem with that in this in this movie there's more of this <sighs> zombie apocalypse feeling. Like, that's really how the film mostly plays out. Yes, in the very beginning of the film, they're trying to figure out who all these people, why these people are acting different, right? And that's kind of how the other ones play out as well. They're very much like they assimilate, they body snatch, then they work up to having an invasion and, a bo and an army to take over. But in this one, it happens so fast. It's like one minute 
my dad. That's not my dad. That's not my dad. The next minute, zombie apocalypse and the rest of the movie. And that's how they act. They act like zombies in this. And for me, it just... I didn't really get a sense of why these things needed to take on the memories, the personality traits of the people. Like, I felt like their whole purpose of being was to take over and eradicate the human species. Like, they want to get rid of them. So, are they just wanting to become us to have our lives? Because if so, that makes sense then. They just want to be us. But if they want to be themselves, but maybe they, they have a plan, like they come here with a plan, and they obviously have some kind of inherent, like primal nature that gets them to want to assimilate to land here, to attack, to recreate, to steal, and then to rule. So are they beings without character? Are they beings without purpose outside of assimilation before that? And they have to actually take from us to become purposeful? Like just, they're gonna be, it's gonna be the same world because it's all the same people, but do they have agendas past that? What I've always been curious on what's the next step. Once the bodies have been snatched, at once everybody has been, you know, sussed out, then what? Then they just go back to being us and they're just us because they have our memories and everything? Like, are we already the body snatched? Like right now, is this post-invasion? <laughs> oh, we're fucking with our heads. I don't know, in this movie, I just didn't see a necessity for the second stage of the assimilation. This was me overthinking it, but once the movie was starting to get towards the end, they were still going after them to assimilate, right? And it just didn't seem to have any purpose to it anymore. Like, why? You're already in the invasion stage of this plan. No one's going to uprise against you. You know? So I guess that's just part of how it goes and you have to have that stage because without it, they're just kind of mindless zombies and they have this, uh, you know, that long stretchy mouth thing that we've seen in plenty of films. Um, I want to say, I don't think I ever saw this movie, but that, uh, oh, that one at the diner, the Legion, isn't that that one? Yeah, I think they have the mouths that stretch, and then, of course, Grave Encounters does that, and uh, we, we've seen the distortion of faces. In fact, it actually ruined that movie, uh, Truth or Dare. That was the one that did that, right? Yeah, right. where I was like, it's actually not a bad movie, but the design of the face and the stretchy and all that shit really made the film laughable because anytime those scenes would happen, you'd just be like, God, that was such a dumb aesthetic choice. It's ruining the movie. But with this one, I feel like this is catered really well to teenagers. Like, I feel like this is a good film for like 13 year olds. Like while I was watching it, it's very PG-13, even though the, uh, the uh, zombie-like characters that are coming to finish off the people that they've copied, they're running around naked, but these characters have no nipples, uh, no genitalia. They're like Barbie dolls from what we can see. Um, so it, 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 it never really uses any cuss words. There's no gore, there's no nothing in that way. There are some effective tense scenes in moments, but most of it feels very um, childish. It feels like a glorified Goosebumps episode. You know, and that really took me out of it as well. I'm not a big fan of PG 13 being in horror anyway. Not that it can't be well done. I've seen plenty of them Last Exorcism, 1408, Skeleton Key. You know, there's, there's plenty of examples of effective. I mean, the entire Insidious franchise is PG 13, and I really enjoyed that franchise. So it's not that it can't be done, but this is just like glaringly PG 13. And so much so that, as I said, I feel like the target audience, the target demographic is teenagers. I actually don't know Teddy Brown's age. Maybe he's 13. I doubt it. I know he's not, but now in my head, I'm like, how old is Teddy? I don't know anything about Teddy. I just know that we talk movies and uh, we call each other cunts a lot and it's pretty funny. 
Love you, Teddy. But yeah, not one I'd recommend, but I will give credit where credit's due. I do think that this was a cool attempt at trying something different in a very played out subgenre, the invasion of the body snatcher subgenre with the original 50s one, the Jeff Goldblum, uh, you know, Donald Sutherland one, which is fantastic. And then the early 2000s one, which no one ever talks about, but I think it's fantastic. Or is it late 90s? The one with Forrest Whitaker? Forrest Whitaker? Um, and then they made the Daniel Craig, Nicole Kidman one later on uh, in like the mid 2000s or something, which was just rinse, lather, repeat. N you know, nothing noteworthy, nothing. And I'm sure we'll get another one. I'm sure we'll get yet another one here in the future. Um, but it, at least this one did try something new. It created more problems for me than, than I think it intended to, but uh, that's just because I'm overthinking it. The horror, while did work for me at times, it also felt very, very kid-friendly and silly, so it, it just didn't pay off. And in the end, the CGI in this is horrid. There's sequences at the end where they're showing stuff on the television and my god it is horrible looking and before that you have like little ants that are crawling up and then the creatures that are running around. I try not to harp on movies too much and I've said this before. If most aspects of the film are working then certain aspects can be lackluster and the great aspects make up for the lackluster aspects. So while I absolutely laugh every single time at the CGI in the Langoliers, and I know the acting and stuff like that is not good, I don't care. I'm so intrigued and so invested in the story because I, it, it just gets my mind going crazy that I can look past other inferior things within it. As long as the film's taking me on a journey I want to be on, I can look past a silly Langolier coming with his teeth and it looking awful. Like I, I'm just so sold on the idea of what the Langoliers are that when they're shown, even though it's, it's super, super, super stupid, I'm still so in the movie that I'm like, meh, it's okay. I'll look past it. But because with this movie, I wasn't really invested. And especially in that first 30 minutes, I was like, what the fuck has Teddy got me into? This is for children. Um, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, shit, Paddington 2 is, I think, one of the greatest movies of the decade. So I don't want to knock kids' movies like they're trash or like that they're beneath me. Absolutely the opposite. I think kids' movies, some of the kids' movies out now are some of the best movies being made, Pixar movies and whatnot. So, but there's, these don't go well together. This is not supposed to be meant for, for, for a teenage audience in my mind. But they made it for one, and I hope the teenagers who watch it enjoy it. But uh, go watch the 78 version and go watch the early 2000s, late 90s. I think it's early 2000s. I think it's just called Body Snatchers. Really, really super underappreciated movie in my opinion. It does not get talked about enough. I dig it. So if you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend checking out that version of it over this version of it. So anyways, all right guys, adios.